now. I'll ask uh, to come up here to the stage. Joanne Montero, she's special, a specialized lawyer, and Alberto Emparanza. He is a professor of uh, business uh, law in the University of the Basque Country. Vamos a seguir hablando también de los riesgos y también de lo que tenemos que enfocar desde. So, uh, we are hearing that uh, for companies to face risks in a better way, uh, they need to take into account standards and certifications, but also law and regulations, and that's why we wanted to hold this panel. So let's go and cover first the basics, A, B, C. Let's take it easy. What about industrial cybersecurity regulations, Alberto? Uh, does such a thing exist? Well, uh, I'm very, very happy to be here, and I hope I can help, because the legal side of cybersecurity is terribly fragmented. There are no real regulations. Sometimes people talk about a cybersecurity code, uh, but it, that's not that doesn't exist uh, by definition, because uh, if there were to be one, uh, it should be international or global, and there's not such a thing. What we do have uh, is the European Union regulation. That does exist. The NIE's directive uh, talks about basic principles that we need uh, to encourage uh, so that uh, we can have better protection uh, in cybersecurity. And the EU directive uh, says data, we will see what kind of data later, data should be available, should be authentic, uh, should be uh, confidential and uh, should have integrity. That's That would be the legal side of the new directive, which will be, will be playing a very, very relevant role uh, in this field in the near future. Then I would like to at least mention something that's been mentioned a number of times uh, yesterday and today, uh, which is the new data protection law that uh, will be compulsory as from the 25th this month. And um, that's another important player uh, in this field. Because cybersecurity leaves a little bit unprotected many different elements to do with design, with uh, um, a number of processes uh, that companies are liable for. And that's why we, legal counsels and uh, solicitors and lawyers, uh, are here, uh, because we need to help you. So uh, there are bits and pieces for regulations, very much fragmented, but uh, there are legal ways uh, to uh, improve cyber protection. Yes, because um, there is a regulation then, but we know there are cases uh, where a company in Gipuzkoa would trade or would serve or buy from somewhere else around the world. So we need to then interpret other regulations. Well, that's a different, difficult comment you made. The uh, directive uh, is European. And what about if the attack comes from Asia, for instance, or if violation of our rights comes from a computer from a country outside the European Union? Well, in that case, we first need to remember that our companies are here, so they need to abide by uh, local regulations, well, local, uh, national, European, whatever. 
And then again, that doesn't uh, mean that we can wa- just wash our hands and uh, that uh, it will be ignored that our data or our customers' data were unprotected. What are the main cyber threats, Anne, in, in your opinion? Because we've heard uh, a number of e- opinions on that, but I would like to have your opinion as well. Well, thinking about uh, important cyber threats, uh, our colleague, uh, the speaker from uh, TUV, uh, TUV uh, mentioned that uh, very famous attack. Uh, we can all think of other situations uh, and news that we hear or we read about. Sometimes uh, it's uh, people uh, pretending to be somebody else because of identity issues. There may be different types. Does that matter from the legal point of view? Well, not so much. Uh, What we want is for them to uh, always take into account that data is the main point. Is data protection that matters at the end of the day because of the liability uh, that the company has, uh, that obligation uh, to protect uh, other people's information. If something goes wrong and when our customers uh, want to then not be liable for something. Uh, It's the cloud that matters. More and more people are connected and are using information from the cloud. But the the cloud is not free from liability. We have that huge server giving me services, uh, which is uh, the cloud. But we need to understand uh, that uh, being careful is partic- and thorough is particularly important because uh, we don't know how well protected the cloud is. And another important matter is uh, for us to um, have services from the service provider, uh, for us to be able to use the cloud. Uh, an agreement has to be signed. So let's try and get our backs covered, uh, because if something goes wrong, uh, I will be made liable, not the cloud. Uh, so I should make, do my utmost uh, to protect my intangible assets. Right. And can I ask you, what would be my duties then if I want uh, to uh, protect data and information correctly? because depending on companies or industries, uh, there would be different levels of risks, but still there would be duties anyway and obligations for companies. Well, we've mentioned uh, authentication, uh, confidentiality, availability, all those different elements have to be uh, Respected. I need to have data that are available, uh, that are uh, complete, that access is only given to people who have special permits, all of those uh, guidelines really would help me then to better respond uh, to different situations uh, so I can define access to what and uh, for obligations uh, to be respected for data integrity. Uh, That would be uh, the approach, really. Right. So uh, what would be liabilities if companies don't comply with all of this? Well, I'm going to be uh, very unpopular and politically incorrect. But I think it has to be said that uh, we very rarely think of uh, cybersecurity prevention. We tend to be reactive. Uh, After an attack, we find all of a sudden that data, files, uh, designs, whatever it is, 
uh, that we had either physically on our computers or more commonly uh, in the cloud. And as a result of that, third parties, our customers, whoever, um, sue us uh, and uh, propose we are liable for it because the uh, new regulation for data protection uh, will be compulsory uh, very, very soon, then there will be fines that, in the case of Spain, uh, can be up to 20 million euros. That's the fine, maximum fine. You might be surprised uh, if you didn't know. But uh, let's remember that the European Union has decided that data privacy is uh, paramount, that data uh, should not uh, be manipulated or tampered with uh, to serve particular interests. It's a very clear, uh, very uh, clear and strong policy uh, at the European Union level. And we're talking about fines now. I'm talking about fines, but it could even uh, be um, a crime according to criminal law in cases uh, where a firm handles particularly delicate or vulnerable situations. Uh, and in case of cyber espionage, uh, let's not forget that employees or executives in companies that have been attacked uh, like this, uh, they could end up in prison because of a criminal procedure. So as I said, uh, though all of those are good reasons uh, for us to be better protected uh, in cybersecurity. What about uh, other levels of liability? Let's talk about consumers uh, who can be victims. For instance, I go to a shop or a supermarket and my details are then given to some other company, uh, and as a result of that, just because I wanted a voucher, right, at the supermarket, I end up with spam and who knows what else. Well, in those cases, consumers uh, can uh, take those companies, the supermarket in this case, to lower. And uh, even if it was as a result of a cyber attack and the attacker was found, the the attacker was would be liable, but also the company that was attacked uh, would be liable in the case of a court case, um, either put forward by a private individual or by a consumer association. So it might be a, an administrative case with a fine, or it might be a criminal case uh, with prison sentences. There are times uh, when uh, it's hard uh, for people to measure certain liabilities like reputation, but please don't forget about it because that's quite serious, very serious. And we might end up, as I said, uh, with fines because of uh, breach of privacy. Uh, we need to remember that. Uh, we need to uh, respect our customers' confidentiality. In a case of cyber attack, uh, it means that we didn't keep those details and information safe. And there are very, very severe criminal sentences. For instance, uh, if you uh, do business uh, with an automotive company, can you imagine what would happen if some important information was disseminated or stolen and uh, we would need to we would need to pay for it. I'm sorry if uh, I was the one who had to say it, but uh, we're talking about cybersecurity. Uh, and uh, risks it involves, uh, financial risks or criminal risks in this case. In your experience, what would be the most risky departments or areas in companies? I don't know if it's a matter of exposure 
as such, but I, I like calling it sensitive. Because, uh, for instance, he, the Human Resources Department uh, holds particularly sensitive information on private individuals. But we sometimes forget about how sensitive uh, business secrets are. All those secrets or information, shall we call it, that really add value to the company. A directive, a European Union directive was approved. It should be transposed soon, uh, precisely about uh, business secrecy. And those matters will really matter uh, very soon. For instance, uh, financial information, marketing details, or, or customers' details, which are not quite intellectual property or industrial property, but that still have a value. Uh, so firms and organizations should protect uh, that information as well to avoid uh, unfair competition, uh, and for organizations uh, to be aware of immaterial data and their value. So maybe the most sensitive department might be human resources, but uh, it could be any of them, in fact, depending on the situation. So uh, what will companies have to do um, about business secrecy then uh, with that new directive? Well, nothing completely different, uh, to be honest. In this case, uh, it's common sense and what we've been doing, uh, prevention with the correct protocols, with, by complying with uh, laws and regulations, and not just part of the company, but uh, each and every person and area in a company. And also, uh, we keep talking about data and information which uh, have to be protected. And if something goes wrong, then we need uh, to have a swift response. We need to be fa uh, fast uh, in acting, which is common sense, as I said. Common sense is not always very common. Sometimes people don't think that as soon as you have an attack, you need uh, to let uh, the police or the court know, or you need to contact your legal expert. Having those steps clear in your mind, starting with prevention uh, in, my, in my own environment uh, with laws and regulations, and then action. Alberto, you mentioned uh, the new... European regulations um, that are coming. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, can you give us a little bit of a summary on the new directive for obligations? Well, uh, let me start uh, with the data protection regulation. We all know what it means, and I really enjoyed the previous presentation because uh, it's a matter of uh, common sense. We're saying, good, but that's not enough. Uh, we need to have procedures. We need to have a clear plan on uh, decisions that have to be made and when, a plan. And uh, not just for data protection, but for compliance with laws and regulations. We need procedures and plans uh, to, uh, to help us with decision making. So we have a, a record of what is done. So there's traceability and we can prove that we're complying with all our regulations, whether it's environmental, industrial, uh, legal for different types of property and so on. The new regulation, the new directive says that uh, risk analysis uh, is basic uh, of our own data and third party data. The second point uh, would be recording our activities, keeping records like a registry uh, of what we do, of what we have. Then. If there is a contingency, if there's a problem, we need uh, to inform and we need to know who we need to inform. We then need to have impact assessments. That would be the fourth uh, 
duty. And then uh, finally, fifth, we need uh, to uh, decide who is going to be responsible for this. It might be uh, the uh, financial manager. Uh, and it's not just a, a matter of red tape. It's not just a, a bureaucratic decision. We need to be aware that um, if there is a problem, it can really hurt uh, the company, its reputation, its workers. So let's please understand that it's not just uh, doing this once. Uh, this is like a uh, cyclic, like revolving and ongoing for continuous improvement. And let's not be negative about it. We have to do it, so we might as well uh, see the beauty of it and what we are to gain. We don't have a lot of time uh, left, but what would you recommend, Yone, uh, for companies uh, for to be better protected? Listening to Alberto now, I was thinking of my general recommendation. If there was just one, it would be prevention. The European Union uh, is fortunately being a great driver for this to happen. So companies should have internal protocols or plans and guidelines, and then we need to be efficient uh, if we have to respond. Well, thank you very, very much uh, for taking part. Uh, and uh, we've learned